think that's one part that uh, we really want to focus on in our tipsy experience where we really want to ensure that you come hospital we are hospitable to you this is like your second home if not it could be your first home too You're listening to hashtag highly sought after in this episode of Hashtag Highly Sought After, I had a chat with Derek Ong, an entrepreneur who has been making waves in the F&B scene here in Singapore. During COVID-19 in 2020, many restaurants were struggling, some even forced to shut down. But Derek was busy setting up new restaurants and his existing five were fully booked every day. So let's find out in this episode what his secret sauce is to making all his restaurants so highly sought after. Let's have a chat. Derek Ong. So Derek, this is really awkward for us. Do you feel? It is. This it is, is like the first time we have an <laughs> official conversation, yes. right? We yeah. tend to have a lot of drink sessions. Mm. But today, Derek and I were super sober. We're drinking water. So we're gonna have a good so chat. unusual. So unusual, I know. We'll do we'll for do me, drinks yeah. later. Yeah. So Derek, I've known you for a while. I've been a huge fan of your Tit Seat Collective. Thank you. But I'm very curious. I've never asked you this question before. How do you even get into the F and B scene? Mm. So I think uh I started when I was 15 years old. So I just want to share a quick story is that uh, I was working in uh, Raffles City like, as a banquet waiter. Um and uh, on the first day of uh of the work. So we are all told to line up to carry the you know the opening yeah, dishes, dun, dun, right? Dun, dun, yeah, dun, the food presentation dun, dun, and all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> so that back then I was quite a big boy. La. Okay. So they can't tell I was 15. They, th they thought I was quite big size. So they put three big cold dishes on my plate, on Got my it. tray. And then they asked me to hold it. They asked, he, they asked if I'm okay. So I carried up Malu, ma, if I say cannot, everybody also carry, right? <laughs> so I said, okay, la, can, can. La. I just carry the whole thing. La. Yes. So I thought just carry, go out, faster put, then done, right? But what happened was that because it's a thousand, uh, there's a thousand, thousand guests, uh, people in a restaurant. Yeah, so they made us wait in the line holding the thing for at least 10 minutes. That's good workout. <laughs> but that was the longest 10 minutes of my life, la, basically. <laughs> so, and I was uh, holding there and by the, before the door even opened, my hands was already shaking. And the, the, the plates were already, the jellyfish was already rocking, <laughs> wobbling already. You know, so I was like, jellyfish oh wobbling. my God, this is like, Probably my first and my last day, right? Yes. So I thought, never mind, just tong tong tong, right? Yes. So when the door opened, I'm like, oh, thank God, I'm gonna go now, I'm yes. gonna go now. So I walked, they made us walk one big round. But lo and behold, when I walked to the center of the ball, right at the center, <laughs> somehow, <laughs> my hands just gave way. So everything just went flowing down to the three floor. Three plates of Three big dish. plates of cold dishes, the jellyfish no longer wobbling, it was just <laughs> right smack on the floor. So I think uh, that was how I started my FMB career. La. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that would be my last day as well. <laughs> hey, can you tell us when that happened, <clears throat> what was the response of the people around you? Well, um, everybody was like on a witch hunt. Like, who's that boy? Who's, who dropped the place? Who's this? Who's that? So I think uh, uh, I, I, was just, I was just trying to find a hole to bury. La. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And so yeah. do you get hired back or that was your last job? Oh, luckily, they didn't even dock my pay. Oh. They told me that the next time you carry less. La. <laughs> <laughs> you just carry one plate. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, two plates. La. Two plates. Yeah, two okay. plates yeah. And that was how Derek On started his career. Yeah, oh with my God. crashing plates <laughs> of <laughs> jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then, and then after that, what happened? So, uh, working in banquet for a while. After that, uh, uh, after my O-levels, I actually went to work with NTUC Group. So that was when I was really very involved and fall in love with f &B because I became a bartender back then. And I, I guess that's where I learned how to be tipsy. La. Yeah. <laughs> so I still remember my master back then was telling me, you, you must learn how to drink. And even when you drink, you must learn to be able to still work after drinking. So wow. I had a very different outlook about drinks, about the whole industry. I have to testify yeah. to that. I've yeah. drank with Derek before <laughs> and it's amazing. I don't know how you do it. Oh, so you started very young. <laughs> yeah, I start young, you know. Drink a lot when I'm young. Drink a lot when I'm young. <laughs> yeah. So then after that, what was your first restaurant that you started or the first F&B thing that you started? So uh, right after I ORD, uh, I, I sat down, I, I looked at some of my options and then I... To me, maybe because of the influence of my dad, I really wanted to also be an entrepreneur to start mm. a business. So uh, what I did was I wrote a business plan uh, to spring Singapore back then. It was spring uh, to, to, to get a business uh, grant. grant. Mm. So I started with a, a fish bar kwa idea. So okay, I managed so to we have to explain, grant. right? Because we have yeah. a lot of non-Singaporeans. Okay, mm. what's ba kwa? Yeah. Ba kwa is like a barbecue meat. Yes, it's a barbecue. But it's yeah. barbecue fish meat. Fish meat. 
Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, so okay. that's how I started. Got awarded uh, uh, for the grant. It was $50,000 back then. Wow. So, I, so I, what I did was that I used the money to start uh, a food store, right? Mm. So I wanted to defray operating costs because if you're just running a festive product, a bar is usually a festive product in Correct. Singapore. Chinese New Year. Yeah, but uh, I just need to run. I still have fixed costs every day, every day right? So I wanted to run a, a, a concept that can defray my costs. So the idea was that I have a pizza and burger place by day. And at night, I would turn it into my production kitchen for my R&D to do whatever I need to do. So Very that was smart. what I, I started doing. At 15 years old? Oh no, that was uh, after my ORD. So that's about 22. Ah, yeah. okay. So you would say that 22 would be your that first business. Yes, yes. Okay. And then yeah. after that, I, I was told that you started a lot of other businesses as well. Just give a quick list of what were other businesses that you were in. Sure. So um, after that, so the Pizza and Burger uh, business, we continued that. I sold it in 2014. It's still operating today by someone else. Uh, then after that, I started my own cafe. Uh, I was also given an opportunity to work on a very big brand called Friends. I'll be there, there for you. you. Da, yes, da, that's the show. Da, 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 da. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah. You so, did? Yes, I, I, so I, I did. We uh, started that place in 2016. Uh, I left that partnership in 2018 with some of my shareholders. Then uh, I started my own thing in uh, 2018 with Tipsy Collective. And that's yeah. how I got to know Derek. So Tipsy yeah. Collective started. So I have to say that, wow, that was a very illustrious career for you, right? You started 15 years old as a banquet guy. Mm. And then 22, right now, it's probably about 10 years. Yeah, You've been doing, 10, doing this years. business for 10 years. Mm. So I'm curious to know, like, what were the struggles that you faced as an F&B entrepreneur? Because mm. we all know this, right? F&B, mm. some days you're up, some days you're down. Yeah. Um, how do you do it? What were some of the struggles? Well, I think specific to F&B, one of the very big uh, issues that we face, uh, it's definitely manpower. Mm. So um, revenue, let's say you look at revenue growth over the years and labor costs over the years. The labor cost has always been growing faster than revenue growth. So example, if you look at the prices of beer, mm. 10 years ago, beer price is the same as today, if not even lower at some places. Uh, because of its competitiveness, more people entering the market, so prices are not able to be... Uh, a more high. premium to be yeah. high. So I think that has been a challenge, uh, I think manpower side, uh, because of its labor costs. Mm. I think uh, that's that's a big one. The second one I would say would be also the low barriers to entry. So because of that, you have a lot of uh, competition, fresh new competition. And you know Singaporeans are rich, right? They make money. <laughs> okay, let's open a cafe, let's open a bar, right? So, uh, so the barrier to entry is, is extremely so low. low. Mm. And if you compare per capita basis to Hong Kong, uh, I think we have a lot more choices compared to the Hong Kongers. It's almost like a one is to two ratio for wow. choice of FMB in Singapore. Got it. So you have yeah. more competition and yet mm. you have to manage the increasing cost, yeah. labor cost in this case. And yeah. somehow in Singapore, we have this law, right? Mm. You have to hire locals first before yeah. you hire foreign talent. Exactly. So then I'm curious. These are the same challenges that your peers and competition are facing as well. Mm. But somehow or rather, I noticed that the Tipsy Collective, right? And we'll talk more about the Tipsy Collective later. It, it, it has different animals' names. Mm. So it's very cool. But you're thriving. And not only just thriving, but that in 2020 during COVID, when people were closing down restaurants or people were suffering, right? Uh, from not having enough people, you were still fully booked. And you actually set up two more new restaurants that are coming up. Mm. How do you do it? What's your secret sauce? Uh, my secret sauce would be sambal. I love sambal. So ha having a good hearty meal makes me happy. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to think that sambal is an acronym, you know? He wants no. to give us S-A-M-B-A-L, uh, six oh, no. principles. Oh yeah, probably okay. I'll work it out next time. But <laughs> yeah, that'll be a good yeah. speech, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so, but joke yeah. aside, right? What do you think were some of the reasons <clears throat> why your restaurants were thriving? Mm. I feel that uh, over the years uh, being in this industry, um, I feel that we, as, as with any business la, that is sustainable, we need to provide real value to our consumers, right? And I think over the years, what I learned to do for this industry as a business is to build this thing into a product that has real value for our consumers and stakeholders. And this comes in many, many, many forms, right? It comes in, of course, quality food, it comes in service, it comes in ambience, it comes in uh, even a proper location that people find it easy to assess. Uh, yeah, I think it's just all these different elements that put together forms a certain product that really offers real sustainable value to our consumers. So interesting. It's the first time I ever heard someone who owns a restaurant seeing the entire restaurant concept as a product itself. Mm, mm. So let's talk about one, shall we? Sure. Uh, who's, which is your, 
<laughs> I hate to do this to fathers. Oh, right? like, I know that which question. is your favorite child? You know, oh, I mean? no. I, because, partly because I, I have no children, yeah. so I, I, I don't really see the difficulty in answering that. Okay. But okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a chance. Okay. Mm. So first of all, let's walk everybody through what are the big five. Okay. So we started with Tipsy Penguin. Very nice. Yeah. And then after that, Tipsy Penguin is in Tampines, but Tampines. Got it, by the way, it's in the east of Singapore. Mm. And then after that, Lady Wu. Lady Wu, yeah. I go there every Wednesday night in the <laughs> past for drinks and live music. Yes. So that's uh, more like a, would you say like a bar? It's a rooftop bar concept. A rooftop yes. bar concept. Yeah. And they have this hidden room where you can sing karaoke. It's very yeah. cool. Back in the day. La. Back in the <laughs> days before COVID-19. Yeah. All right. So that's Lady Wu. And mm. then what's the third one? Uh, Takeshi Noodle Bar. Takeshi Noodle Bar. Where yeah. is it? This is in uh, Kyongsiak area. Kyongsiak. Take Lim Road. Yeah. Take it's Lim Road. Uh, within a hotel called Hotel Soloha. I tried that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, mm. great. And then so that's the third one. And the fourth one? Uh, Tipsy Bird at PLQ. Big fan of that one. Mm. <laughs> Shout out to all your stuff at PLQ, right? Yeah. I have to say that um, I know you're doing well because um, I, I love bringing my friends to the one at PLQ, Tipsy mm. Bird, mm. and it's always fully booked. People are always queuing up. That's how I know you're doing well. Mm. So that's Tipsy Bird. And then a the fifth one? Uh, Tipsy Bunny at Gem in Jurong East. That's, so he has taken care of the people in the East, the South, and then the West. All right, we need mm. to ask him what's happening to the North. So out of these five, products as you call it right can you share with us one okay and, and let's analyze the value what was the mm. value so that even though not all of us listening to you are f &B entrepreneurs mm. but now we understand that it's all about stacking value mm. so tell us which one would you want to pick um i'll probably pick my first baby which is tipsy penguin okay cool. so i think uh, when we started there i i uh, first of all there was a pretty lack of uh bars and proper uh dining and drinking places in the east so we thought that uh we wanted to create a concept that is a bit different uh that really offers uh true value to our consumers in a sense where we have a very good chef we have a very good food but we are not pricing it ridiculously high uh we are pricing it very affordably mm. uh with enough spread for us to sustain our business mm. because i want you to come back not one time right so Correct. i want it to for you to be comfortable as well so i think that's one thing that uh, we've brought in there Good food, affordable price, mm. and the concept is different. And the as concept well. is different because it's bar plus real food. Yeah, like and food. I think for us, we also fo we are quite focused on entertainment. Mm. So uh, for our company, we when we go out, uh, it's usually a social setting, right? And we want it to be a setting where people can really enjoy themselves, have what we call a tipsy experience, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> love it. Tipsy so experience. yeah, and I I I think. In the midst of, I myself go out a lot with my friends. I really enjoy having a good time with my friends. And we want to be that uh, venue that we can create that kind of space. Uh, so we focus a lot of live entertainment. So we used to have live bands back in the day before COVID. Once COVID uh, is over, we will definitely bring back all this live entertainment. Uh, beyond just singing, we also do different games like uh, trivias. We also run entertainment uh shows uh, comedy shows yes so i think it's really a part of a lifestyle that i think i personally want to enjoy and i want to create that platform for everybody else to enjoy as well well i love how you're thinking that you know most of us if you talk to an fmb entrepreneur they will they will focus a lot on the product itself oh um, we serve food law mm. right mm. but yours is very different you're telling me that every product that you create you want to give them a tipsy experience mm, yes and then using that as your north star then mm. you think about how do you land it yes. in that location yes so wow this is fantastic would you say customer experience is also a very big part of your differentiation uh i definitely think so i think that uh this is a people people business mm. so in in the way we make people feel i think it is extremely important uh, I would I would quote Danny Mayers. So I went to attend one of his talk when he was in Singapore before he opened Shake Shack. Uh, so for those of you that do not know, Danny Mayers is the owner of Shake Shack. Um, he is the restauranter of the year for many many years running in New York, wow. one of the most uh, interesting places for FMB in the world. I think one thing he really shared and I, that really I caught in my spirit was that um, there's a difference between service and hospitality, right and Service is a one size fit all model, but hospitality talks about a one size fit one model. So I think that's one part that uh, we really want to focus on in our tipsy experience, where we really want to ensure that you come, hospital, we are hospitable to you. This is like your second home, if not 
it could be your first home too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. when we get drunk, I would just stay there for the whole day, right? Yeah. So, okay, let, let's dive deep. Let's unpack that. So service is when you're serving many, mm. but then hospitality is, is for one person, mm. personalizing it. Mm. How, how do we do that uh, mm. as, a, as a service professional? I think How to scale um, it it's always good to have a set of guidelines and rules, which is what service is all about, right? So you have to do this, you have to do that, which is all good. But I think to go beyond that, the extra mount is where you go from good to great. Mm. And that is why I would say hospitality can be and should be, you know? Um, and I think it's really getting the staff, I think that the staff members to understand that, why are we in this industry, you know? because. F&B is not just about passion. Passion alone, you can't sustain because you can still get tired, right? But if you ask me, and I, I would say that F&B is more of a calling than a passion alone. And when if you, if it's, if you view it like, well, you are designed you know, to do this work, to serve people, to, to you know, be hospitable, then you will be able to flow in it every day. Yeah. Wow. So is that how you tell your staff? Like, what was the I think purpose when that I, you give to your staff? I think when I, let's say when I interview my key staff members, yes. I think there's one big question I ask myself. Which is? Which is, are they, do they have this calling in this industry? Right? Are they designed to work in this industry, to do well in this industry, to thrive in this industry? I think this is a very big part of how I also built the, uh, the team. Uh, back to your question about why we did well over COVID. I think over this time, I really learned that I'm very gr grateful to my, my team. Uh, to every staff member, even to my partners, I think uh, everybody really just put together as a team and we pivoted fast and well to help us uh, grow even throughout this trying periods. So speed was also very important. Tell us a little bit about that, especially like, you know, during the COVID period mm. uh, in Singapore, we had a lockdown mm. and we cannot go to physical restaurants, right? Mm. And plus, I remember there was that uh, space, you know, mm. prior to the lockdown, we had to reduce the number of tables because mm. everybody had to be spaced out. Okay. So tell, walk us through that, that, that experience you had. Do you mm. suffer during that period of time and mm. how do you overcome it? So actually before uh, Circuit Breaker happened, uh, we, we, we know that the virus is going a bit crazy, right? Um, so as early as February, I really started telling my team to start preparing for our delivery concept. So in, just in case that we need to pivot, we, can ready to, we are ready to go, right? So that's what exactly that's what we did exactly, and then on the first day of Circuit Breaker, we were we launched our brand immediately. Hadouken. Hadouken, yes. Hadouken, right? Yes, to Hadouken all the bad energies away. <laughs> I, okay, we need to talk about branding later, guys. Sure. Keep listening to us mm. in this podcast. I'm gonna ask him about his creative thinking and his process, but let us summarize what I'm hearing from you so far. So, so number one, it's about service versus hospitality. Mm. That um, it's about giving people uh, an experience, mm. right? and it's personalized. And then number two is having a, a bigger mission. Mm. And your mission is not just about selling food, but your mission is about, you know, giving people a tipsy experience. Yes. And that kind of perpetuates down when you hire a team. Mm. Last but not least, you mentioned a lot of value. Mm. That it's about stacking value yes. uh, for your customers. Yes. Okay, so th these were all the things that helped you win. Uh, and, but the final thing I learned from you, it's about pivoting, mm. that it's about speed. So can you teach us? So I want to unpack two things, okay? Let's talk, since we talk about COVID, we do not know when's the next disaster going to strike us, mm. true? Yes. How can we have your kind of intuition mm. that like in February, I mean, I heard about this whole COVID thing that, we, that back then was not called COVID, it was called Wuhan virus, remember? Yep. Right? And I clearly remember my boss, he said to us that, you know, this Wuhan thing, let's just keep an eye on it, mm. right? Because back then it was just China, yep. but I totally ignore it, mm. right? But you had that instinct to kind of pay attention to it and to adapt. Mm. How can we nurture that? I think it's, uh, <clears throat> first of all, to be aware of, let's say you are a leader in your business, you are a leader in any position that you are, you are caught to have a, you're holding a certain responsibility. So imagine yourself, the captain of a ship. What are you doing on the bridge, right? And what is your job on the bridge? It's to steer the ship. So you need to have a vision of what's happening around you and what you're heading into. And you need to look at the weather and you look at a lot of things, macro and micro, um, micro and macro environments. So <clears throat> I think as leaders, it's very important to have um, anticipatory leadership skills. Mm. So before things happen, what if you need to prepare? Because everybody's following you. And to steer a ship that's large, you need to do things much earlier before your ship can turn, right? 
So as your ship gets larger, you need to anticipate even earlier. So I think these are things that I've learned from uh, various people in the industry. Uh, not may, may not be personally, but I think I just try to catch what are these people doing great and how did they do so great. So I think these are some certain things that I've been learning as well. So it's about paying attention to the the trends out there, the macro, as you said, right? Mm. Because I think micro, we all know that, which is about looking at the present moment, how can mm. we grow the business? Yes. So is there any tips, very practical tips for all of us, right? Even myself, I'm in the education business. How can I make sure that I don't get destroyed by the next pandemic? Uh, and I need to innovate, but I do mm. not know what signs to look out for. Mm. What would you, how would you advise me? I think, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember where I read this, but, uh, it talks about this very huge uh, VC uh, and about how they have been doing business for century, a century and stuff, something like that. And it talks about how, what really makes you survive. The survival of the fetus is really the people that adapt well. Mm. And things can change. Your, your environment that changes, you can't change them, right? So to, for you to survive, you need to adapt. Mm. So adaptability is very important, I think, in any people that want to do well in life. Wow. Well yeah, said. I think that's really, really important. And so in other words, I may not be able to pick up the trends, but I can train on my adaptability, yes. get used to being in uncomfortable situations mm. or trying new things. Yes. You know, there's a saying that in today's world, right, it's no longer the big fish that eats the small fish, mm. it's the fast fish that eats the slow fish. Mm. And I think that that really echoes what you just said. So it's about paying attention to signs and, and then, you know, anticipating that what if, I, I think what you mentioned was the what if. Mm. I think we need to start thinking that way. Do you think mm. a lot of what ifs? Uh, I think I do. I think we just need to form uh, certain baselines la, in, in, mm. in case this and that so that uh, we can protect jobs. I think protect the business as much as we can. So sometimes being yeah. paranoid is not a bad thing, right? Well, I wouldn't. I I wouldn't want. I don't want to use the word paranoid because that's. I think still a bad thing. Still not, like, but I think we, we 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 have to uh, by faith lah, You know, yes. still need to do what we need to do as leaders, to cast the vision. Yet to also have a vision of everything that happens around you, so you can best make decisions for the betterment of the company, for the betterment of your organization. Beautiful. I love that. Mm. So we have also covered now on speed and adaptability so that we can pivot fast. The next thing I really want to unpack is really back to hospitality, mm. right? So how can the rest of us listening to you, uh, whether we are building our own business or whether we are solo entrepreneurs, how can we increase the hospitality? And not just because people always talk about customer service, right? Now, mm. But now you're elevating that. You're saying that hospitality is way higher than, than service. Mm. How can we get to that level? Um, <clears throat> everybody have their own style to to deliver that hospitality. But the most important thing is it must be from the heart. It must be from the heart. So I can train and train and train a certain service staff, but I can tell if that they don't do it from the heart. And that's what really uh, irks me sometimes. Even when I go to a restaurant, they could be very well known, they could be raved all about for this and that, but I can feel whether it is, if it's from the heart. And I think that that is something that permeates every single human being. You know, Derek, sometimes like when we run a business, right? We, we, want, we, we started with passion mm. and we know that we need to serve from the heart. But mm. sometimes we get stressed and burdened by the need to perform and, and, and profits and cash flow and all these things do burden us. Mm. And, and running a restaurant is no joke. Running mm. a restaurant is like steering a ship. Mm. How do you balance between serving from the heart and yet not getting yourself worried and bogged down by the pressure of the business? Mm. I think one of my motivations as well to start uh, my business, I think to really step out and do something on my own was, to, was because that I would be, then be able to uh, control uh, work environments. And I think the key word is really creating healthy work environments. And with a healthy work environment, things flow, flow in a good equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So people, yes, the, things can happen in life, which we are all in different seasons of life, but with a healthy work environment, I think it stabilizes uh, life. It has less entropy, so you have less things to worry about. You, you come to work better. And with this work environment, there are people like your managers, your supervisors, that could also take care of you if things are not doing well in your own personal life. And we could then as a company think, how can we help? Is this a, something that we can help as well? Because I think, to me, it's not about job. It's your career. It's your life. 
we spend more time at work than at home. Very true. And the, be- the, 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 the last thing I want is that you come to work and work is another s- bad environment like sure. politics, like this and that. So I think that's something that I str- I strive. La. I, I don't think we are uh, we are going to be 100%, but I think it's a conscious effort that I think our management pay uh, for the staff and the work environment for it to be healthy. Very beautiful, which in other words is that before I can start caring for other people, which is my customers, yes. I need to first care for myself. Definitely. Right? Because Definitely. if I care for myself, then I have the energy to overflow. To Definitely. Others. So if I'm running a team, then as a leader, I need to create an environment where the employees feel cared for, Mm. then they can return the favor because they're modeling, you're modeling the way. Yes. Then as a solo entrepreneur like myself, then it's about taking care of myself first, making sure that I treat myself as the best customer. Mm. Then I can do the same with other people. Yes. Do I get you right? Yes. I think one important thing to add here is that I've realized that over the years uh, of leadership and, and with working with different people, um, the best way is actually what we call, you know, there's a comfort zone, mm. the learning zone and the panic zone, right? <laughs> yes. And then I think for us, it's really pushing people to the learning zone. Different people have different shapes of how it looks like, right? That's true. Some have very small comfort zone, but a huge learning zone. Most people have, no, and some have, some have very huge panic zones. Yes. But I think we try to form that for all of whatever we can form. And we try to push people to that learning zone because at the end of the day, even if someone leaves us after, after one or two years, they must look back and say, wow, I learned something at Tipsy Collective, mm. right? They did gain something here. And I think that's the least I want to do for anyone that that worked with us. Yeah, they must gain something for their own personal growth. You know, sometimes we we are just uh, passing passing by, like they're not, we're not their destiny in a, in a job sense, but our career sense, but we do want to make sure that they did take something positive away. Yeah, like a stop in away. their life. Yeah. Love that. Mm. Now let's go, let's talk a little bit about your brand. Like, why the name Tipsy? So I think when I started, I, I think brand names are very important, right? Everybody call your name. Whatever you market, your logo, everything is there, right? Yes. <laughs> so to us, I, I, like I share with you, we really wanted to create the Tipsy experience. You know, we, we, we want our staff to have the Tipsy spirit. You know, and we are the tipsy and, folks. And, <laughs> and, and we so want to have ironic the, that we yeah. didn't offer you any alcohol to give you a tipsy <laughs> podcast experience. It's okay, it's okay. I will have that later. <laughs> Not too much. Because to us, why tipsy, right? Yes. We want to have our experience to be tipsy. Not drunk, huh? Not drunk. Because we don't believe in getting overdosed. But just a nice, comfortable level where we're happy, fun. We can chat, we can relax. De-stress over the day. I think that's a very beautiful experience that we want to create. So that's why we started with the name, by right? giving our customers, people that we're shutting out to, what you are, what you want. Uh, like wow, this is what I'm looking nice. looking at. You know yeah. how a lot of times when we come up with names, it's very inward. Like mm, what names do I like? Mm-hmm. But I like how you think that you're thinking about the outcome you want to achieve, mm. and that becomes the name. Mm. So because you want every one of them to be tipsy, yes. And now we yeah. understand there's a difference mm. between tipsy and drunk. And tipsy mm. is that that moment where you're you're a bit you, you you're not too uptight. Mm. You're relaxed. Mm. You're happy. Yeah. But yet it doesn't harm you yet. Yes. Right. And you and, won't regret tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you won't regret tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Because you you want to end up doing yeah. things you don't remember, right? Yeah. So that zone, that tipsy zone, is yes. where you want to get people to. Yes. And that's how you came out with the name. Yes. Beautiful. Then my next question is, as all of you guys heard in the podcast earlier, there is penguin, there is bird, and then the, there's bunny, and then the two more animals coming out soon. Mm. Like, how do you give out this concept of animals? Actually, not even animals. But yeah, yeah animals, because mm. bunny is an animal, right? I, I, I do feel that <clears throat> humans can relate very special to animals. There's a, just this special connection with uh, different animals. Some people love dogs. And one, one animal that people will never hate, in my opinion, is penguins. Really? Let's do a poll, yeah. guys. <laughs> do you or do you not love yeah. penguins? Let us know. Yeah. Do you hate penguins? You wouldn't hate, hate a penguin, penguin right? Yeah. Well, it's true. Yeah. I mean, you because, may not love it, yeah. but it's hard to hate a penguin. Yeah, I yeah. mean, especially with Madagascar, right? I kind of hmm. like those penguins. Right? Yeah, so cute, right? Okay, and, very smart. And, and actually, when you, are, when you are tipsy, you wobble like a penguin, right? <laughs> That is yeah. such an awesome animal to think about. But the most interesting fact is okay. that penguins are the most sociable birds in the world. They are the most sociable. They are always in a social environment. And it, a group of penguins is called a huddle, right? And like I said, when we envisioned to create Tipsy Collective with his first, our first outlet, Tipsy Penguin, we wanted it to be a social gathering place. We wanted it to be about friends coming together in a setting, getting tipsy, getting having fun, listening to good music, you know, 
I think that's really what I really enjoy as well. This is so cool. I, okay, guys, yeah. I've been in Tipsy Penguin so many times, I, I didn't know all those <laughs> things, all these fun facts. But I know Tipsy Penguin always do trivials, and I'm sure yeah. it would have come out quite yeah. a bit, right? Mm. Now, your latest one that you set up recently, and I had a privilege to be there, is mm. Tipsy Bunny. Yes. Right? And that was in the West. Mm. Bunny. Mm. Bunny sociable? They are. They uh, are highly know, active as well. Really? I just yeah. know bunnies love to like mate. <laughs> they do. They do as well. <laughs> Is there some kind of implication? Or, uh, okay, well, so bunnies are sociable. Mm, they are. I think um, I think the whole idea of when we came along designing these different animals, exactly. it's really about, <clears throat> you know, we build brands. We will, First, we want to build brand awareness, right? Yes. But that's what we call brand awareness. And then the, the next level to me is brand love. Mm. And then the next level to me is brand advocacy, right? And to me, Certain animals are just easier to love than others. And I think for me, I pick animals that are much cuter and easier to love. Bunny. So that's how we started. Yeah, yeah. Bunny is cute, especially yeah. if you like the, the book, right? It's this mm. brown rabbit. I can't remember what's his name. Yeah, Bugs Bunny is a bunny. So Bugs Bunny, yeah. yes, yeah. it's true. It's a bunny too. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and well, the bunny that mm. I, I noticed is uh, in, your, in your Tipsy Penguin, it has a tall hat. So it kind of reminds me of Alice in Wonderland as well. Mm. Right. So I get it now. Um, so it's not about brand awareness, but brand love and having a mascot helps. Mm. Do you think mascots are only relevant for restaurants or do you think mascots are also relevant for individual personal brands? I think they are relevant across a lot of various things. Uh, it's, I think, the way we want to apply it mm. and how we want to relate to our consumers or people that we are reaching out to. And if you can use, I think mascots are effective tools. You can effectively use them as well. My God, something yep. to think about. I have a community, but we have no mascot. We have no animal. Mm. <laughs> I need to think of a cute, cute animal. Mm. Hmm. Okay, I get it. I'll probably pick a Yoda, a Groga. You know? <laughs> wow. like, look like Yoda, yeah. but I need to pay the license fee. Oh, yes, right? you definitely do. <laughs> now, then I have to ask this question. Mm. You have tipsy penguin, and then you have tipsy bunny. Then why tipsy bird? Mm. So, we wanted a variation of a penguin yes. uh, for the PLQ precinct. So, we wanted a, a brand that wasn't so generic. And when you are tipsy, you feel free like a bird. So he has an not? answer to everything, guys. Okay, <laughs> this is not prepared. Okay, guys, I didn't really prepare him too much, but this is so cool. Yeah, but freedom. Yeah. Uh, so, would you able? Like, I will reserve that as the last question. Okay, mm. uh, which is what's your what's your angle? Mm. Um, but I, I wanna I wanna maybe end off here because I personally have experienced um, the tipsy experience, mm. right? And what do you think we can do as a brand, as, an, as a personality? How can we make our customers tipsy as well? How mm. can we be their alcohol? To, to me, tipsy is really um, letting your hair down, you know, uh, having um, a very comfortable, relaxed time with your friends, uh, just having a good time, you know. Um, I, f I feel that for, 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 you, for, for us, uh, it's really how we can... Um, not too sure how to make them tipsy without drinking though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. it's so not fair, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, I cannot. Oh, yeah. by the way, don't, let, let, actually, that's true. When I was speaking in LA uh, two years ago, they served champagne for conference. I see. Wow. I think it's okay. great because if I suck, they won't realize it. <laughs> right? Because they yeah. will still be very relaxed. Uh, maybe let me ask you another, another, another way, okay? okay? I noticed that you have a lot of regulars. Okay. And we all know that when you start mm. a restaurant, you want to have regulars because regulars give you certainty of income, right? Mm. Teach us how you do that. Like, how do you nurture a customer and turn them into a regular? I, I feel that um, <clears throat> we didn't really, to be honest, have a very specific model mm. or framework to just really focus on regulars. I think it's really getting our basic product, like I talked about, get it right, get it consistent. And then I think that these people will naturally come back. And then those that come back more, then they became our regulars. So, so I, it's a very organic it's process. It's a very organic process. I think that my focus is still building the consistency within our service teams to do what they need to do and our products to be what it is. Got it. So let me step number one is think about how can we be of value to our customer mm. at the different levels. So in your case, the food, the hospitality, the ambiance, the experience, right? Mm, and, the, yes. and and everything else that you just talked about. Yeah. And then making sure that it's consistent in all your different creations. Yes. 
because it's easy to be nice to you once, but it's mm. going to be difficult to be nice to you all the time. Mm. So that consistency. Yeah. Social media. Before mm. we finish up, let's talk about social media. How okay. has social media played a part in your success, in your brand success? Um, I think like what you mentioned before the podcast was about something about um, how the media scene has changed. Absolutely, yes. And I, I still remember about I think last year I was in I was uh, talking about marketing to one of the in the school, and I feel that in this point in time, it is the most fragmented scene for marketing. It has been totally decentralized. If I could put it into an analogy, it's just like Bitcoin, where the banks have no longer are able to centralize your, your things, right? It has been totally decentralized and it's like blockchain. And I think that right now, the social media is something like that, where anybody that has good content, they can con create well, they are able to attract well, they, they get eyeballs and they get attention. And whether, whoever gets this attention gets this influence. So the scene has totally changed, right? So for us, <clears throat> social media is the platform that we use to shout out to our customers, where we put in our contents, where people that want to follow us know about us. That's where we use as a platform. Back in the day, you can't. You can't do much. You go to radios, you go to newspapers, you go to SPH you for... You have to pay money. You have to pay a lot of money. Yeah. So it makes it very hard for smaller players to actually do things because your cost of capital is going to be really high yeah. to even start anything to do, to shout anything at all. So now because it's decentralized, anybody with great content, great ideas, it will be there will be a, there can be attention taken. And how yeah. do, what can, what are some of the best content that you have created so far, under the Tipsy Collective? Um, I think to be honest, we are very focused on creating experiences. Mm. Um, pre COVID, uh, I think one thing that I love to do was to create all kinds of events at my venues. So like our Halloween nights, you know. I was there. Yeah, and <laughs> I think we have the first ever pillow fight in the East. Okay, I wasn't there. Yeah, so we had. Wasted. Yeah, so we had a very crazy night. We just wow, people fighting with the pillow. Are you serious? Real pillows. Yeah, real pillows. Feathers, feathers all around the place, and then we awarded different awards. I think we 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 I think we have done content wise is really creating such. Uh, out of the norm events ex experiences for our customers, and then capturing on video and pictures, and yeah. and then put it out on social media. Yeah. So we even uh, on a New Year's Eve uh, night, uh, one of the nights, uh, it was 2019, I think, New Year's Eve, uh, we had such a big party. You know, we turned the whole Tipsy Penguin into a club, you know, where we had a DJ, we had people uh, dancing, we have a dance floor. <laughs> and <clears throat> by the end of the night, uh, there were a lot of zombies, dead zombies outside the place. <laughs> <laughs> that one's called drunk penguins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the tipsy drunk. penguins in the room, the drunk penguins outside the room. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So it's about, so it still boils back down to creating the experience, but that social media is a way to document the experience and to communicate that. Yeah, definitely. Well, now, you have a big challenge mm. ahead of you. 2021 mm. is still not the time for you to organize that kind of events because yeah. of social distancing. Yeah. How can you still create that tipsy experience in spite of all these limitations? Uh, we gotta scale it down. So instead of doing it as a whole you, whole outlet, we gotta do it with eight people. Of course, not on a full fledged event, but I think it is big things matter, but small things matter even more. So going into the every single uh, group of customers, making sure that their experience is good. If they need need any kind of experience, we create for them. We can help them at whatever reasonable cost, I think it's something that we would strive to do. Do you have an example of that? Um, example, when people celebrate their birthdays, how can we make these birthdays a little bit more special? Um, I think these are some of the little things that we will try to do. Um, yeah, and really, like I said, our core product, giving them the deep sea experience. Now, before we come to a closing, okay, in case you know people are listening to us halfway and they kind of zone out for whatever reason, I felt that today my biggest takeaway from you it's about the experience that when you create an experience um, in your case a tipsy experience people cannot help but to want to come back and people cannot help but to want to tell the world about it so if i can summarize it all right what would contribute to that tipsy experience so that we can emulate model after um what would contribute to a tipsy experience yeah, your tipsy experience mm. I feel that 
having a very heartfelt environment um, where the staff is really uh, genuine that really want to make you happy like really want to make you tipsy <laughs> if I can just like Disney remember yeah. Disney is all about making sure you have the experience yeah. right? so happy stuff yeah. with the heart to surf yeah. want to make you happy to make you tipsy sorry <laughs> okay, in your case make you tipsy my yes. case hopefully make you happy right yeah. okay yeah. that's one what else mm. Um, I, I, I quality food. I think these are all very important. Mm. You know, uh, there's a, really a long list of different things that are important. Food for sure. I think even uh, the ambience, the music, the the furniture sometimes as well. I think a lot of different touch points really matters. But like, really, the core, the core of it all is really um, when you're there, um, and if you have a good drink that that, that night, you will enjoy yourself. I think that's one one thing, you know. Uh, I, I've been to a few places where I didn't really enjoy the food, to be honest. And yes. then, um, but I still had a good time that night. It was still memorable for me because I did have a good time uh, there with my friends. So um, I think it's something that we we try to we try to do la, beyond. Uh, I think all the food and beyond all the everything else. I I love what you just mentioned a concept <coughs> which is touch point. So something mm. I picked up is. Um, when we think about how we take care of our customers, we need to think about where are all the touch points. Mm. And if for every touch point, we can put a little bit of heart, like mm. how can we show a little bit more care? How can we add a little bit more value in that touch point? That mm. itself, entirety, it's already the experience yeah. that would set things apart. Yeah. Well, well, guys, I'm sure mm. you guys are all feeling a little bit thirsty. And if you are <laughs> thirsty, please go down to Tipsy, uh, especially if you guys are from Singapore. And if you're not from Singapore, please write in to Derek <laughs> and ask <laughs> him to set up one uh, in your country. So tell, tell everybody, okay, before we close, like in mm. 2021 this year, what's coming up for you and Tipsy Collective? What were we to expect from you guys? So uh, I think we are still... Uh, trying to grow the business, I feel that, first of all, a very wise old man once told me um, that if you have talented people in your team and you don't grow, these people will have to leave. Just like a fish tank, right? The fish will keep growing because these are good fishes. But if your tank doesn't grow, you, you shouldn't keep these fishes in your tank. So I think one of the stress, or I wouldn't say stress, I think one of the uh, things that I really, really pursue why I want to pursue so much of growth is because I do have great people with me and I really hope that they have a great career, a great journey of life uh, with our company. And I really want to ensure that uh, we can don't just provide a job, but really a career that we can go as long as we can together. This is so beautiful. So, I've never saw it that way. I always so, thought that it's because you just wanted to be everywhere in Singapore. But your central um, motivation was really your team. Definitely. I think... I think, of course, these, these are aligned. But I think one of the core things that really wakes me up and really want to grow the business is because uh, of these people that had believed in me from day one. Uh, and I really hope that they have not put their trust in the wrong ship. La. And I really want to grow it uh, so that all of us can really grow together. I Many a times when I interview people or people that join my company, I look at, I ask myself one question. Can this, people, can this person retire in my company? And this is maybe a very long-term vision, but I think about, think about that. It will not be easy. It takes two hands. It takes two, a lot of things. But I think I, well, I want to start thinking. I always think like that. And I, yeah, because I, I myself, when I wasn't doing very well in my own uh, partnerships, I'd, when why I left some is because I don't think I can stay in this partnership for life because mm. I don't think I can retire. I don't think I can get whatever, you know. There's so no future. There's no brightness there's of no future. There's no future. So I think uh, that's why I uh, decided to change and do something on my own. Um, but back to your question. So I think that's why we grow a lot and we are striving to grow. Uh, so next month, we're going to launch two more concepts in the North. Yay! Yeah. I stay in the North. Yeah. Finally. Remember, we were just complaining about how come nothing in the North. Yeah. Okay. Tell so us. I think this has been a few years in running because you know we started in the east, right? Then we moved to the central. We have been looking at the west outlets for many months, in fact a year. But what happened was actually COVID was a blessing in disguise for our group because of uh, some uh, an operator shut down and we were given uh, a space there that we really really liked. 
And actually, the lease wasn't up until 2022. Oh. So we were willing to wait until 2022 to take that space. That's true. But things were expedited for us, so we were very happy. La. So blessed. So we took the West. Now we are moving to the North. It's called Tipsy. What, you all want to guess? <laughs> okay, everybody, please go guess. Okay, think what of animal cute animals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we are very cute animal sloth. <laughs> that's, <Hey. laughs> that's very sleepy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, okay, yeah. over drinking becomes sleepy. Yeah. Okay, let me think. What other animals are cute? Mm. Uh, cute animals. Yeah. Puppy? No. A tipsy corgi? <laughs> no, wow, but no. <laughs> Wait, uh, I know. Mm. Panda. That's right. Tipsy panda. <laughs> Guys, you hear it first yeah. on the podcast. Tipsy yes. panda. Oh my god, tipsy, tipsy panda. panda. I'm going to dress up yeah. as a panda. I have a panda pajamas. By oh, the way. nice. It will dress up pajamas. So, who doesn't love a panda, right? You know? Exactly. Paul yeah. from the uh, Everybody Loves Kung Fu Fighting. Fighting. Yeah. Ha, ha, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And everybody queues up in a zoo to go and see the panda, right? So, oh, that's true. people will love. I hope that they will queue up at my zoo too. <laughs> <laughs> I, we yeah. will. The northerners yeah. will, will go get them. Not that we have pandas inside, lah. But yeah, they, and, you guys can be the pandas. <laughs> and if we stay, we, we stay up too late. We'll end up yeah. having panda eyes. Uh, yeah. That work too, right? <laughs> yeah. So got it. So in the north, you're gonna have tipsy panda, yeah. and then you have a bar. If I remember. Yeah. What's so the that bar is called bar? OT bar. So OT. OT. Is it another animal that's very cute? OT. You know, OT usually stands for overtime, right? Yes. So the whole place was designed like an office kind of a team. Okay. So if you say like if you're Someone calls you, hey, honey, where are you? Uh, OT. Oh, I, I'm doing OT. I'm at OT. Oh yeah. my uh, God. Yeah, but really OT. <laughs> and I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah, you're not lying. I'm just not giving you the full information. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so, the way you come yeah. out, your names are brilliant. But what it actually means to us, yes. OT, is only tipsy. <laughs> yeah. All right. You so got, I got to give it up to you. I want you to get only be tipsy here. You, you know, know <laughs> I, I'm thinking right now, I have two titles for today's podcast. The original title that I want to have is How do you create a tipsy experience for your customers? Mm. Now I'm tempted to change out to How do you come up with creative names <laughs> that your customers will remember for life? Uh, oh my god, that's so good. OT. OT. Yeah, I'm just going to say sorry, OT, OT. I don't people think I'm working, but I'm yeah. actually drinking at yeah. your bar. Yeah, and the whole place is a bit like office themed kind of a style. So. And they're called office themed. Yes. And there's a big <laughs> office upstairs too. Yeah. Okay, mm. only tipsy. Yeah. Oh my god. Derek. Props up to you for coming out with the best names. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really think that you deserve to have the success you have. Today, we know why. Because when you start every single restaurant, you start with your people in mind, that you take care of them, you take care of their future, and in turn, they take care of your customers. Mm -hmm. I think it was Richard Branson that said that, and even Jack Ma says this. Mm -hmm. if, of all people, the first people you care about is not your shareholders. The yep. first people you care about are your employees. Yep. You care about your employees, your employees will take care of your customers. Yes. And your customers will take care of your shareholders. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Derek Ong from Tipsy Collective. Thank Remember you. to go check him out thank and you. his restaurants. Derek, thank you so much thank for you doing so much. this interview. No problem. All right, cheers. Cheers.